Do you want to use your resin printer to make silver jewellery? Today we're cracking out the blue cast to show you how. In the last instalment of this series we used our FTM Audi printer and our resin 1HAL D7 to see how well we could print our various ring designs. The time has come however to open the blue cast resin. It's not cheap at $165 Australian for a half litre bottle, but the results online seem astounding and I'm really excited to see if I can emulate them. In this video I'll take you through slicing, printing, clean up and post curing so they're ready to send off to a foundry and come back as silver pieces. I still haven't settled on a favourite slicer for doing resin prints, but in this video I'm using B9 Creator. I moved the coral ring up off the bed and used a minimal amount of support posts. The next thing I needed was slicer settings, so I turned to the Bluecast website for more info. I found a guy there that told me to have 5 bottom layers with 1 minute exposure time and then 10 to 14 seconds for my other layers depending on geometry. The settings for Z lift and Z lift speed were pretty close to what I already had so I thought I'd just retain those from my Monocure 3D profiles. Elsewhere in the document it had even more details, such as the burnout cycle and how long to post cure for. Interestingly it recommends half an hour and doing it until it turns from blue to white. I use Nano DLP to run my printer and here is my blue cast profile for 50 microns. All of these settings at the top don't really do much because I use dynamic calculation. I'll cover how to do this in a future video but all you need to know is that I've set my range for most layers between 15 and 11 seconds curing time with 5 60 second layers for burn in as recommended. My lift speed ranges between 125 and 35 and my lift amount of millimetres is between 4 and 6. Elsewhere I have pixel dimming switched on and anti-aliasing switched off. For this project I thought it worthwhile to change the FEP for the first time. Give the bottle a good shake and then you pour it in and immediately you will notice the smell. It's much stronger than Monocure 3D. Unfortunately I had some typos in my settings the first two times I tried and that resulted in a pile of mush stuck to the FEP because it didn't stick to the build platform. Fortunately for me it was third time lucky. After wasting quite a few hours on the failed prints, I was pretty excited when the bed raised up and I saw my coral ring sitting ready to go. After ultrasonic cleaning in IPA, it looked like this. I was super impressed with the way the ring had been formed. I got out the vernier calipers and verified that all the cross sections were 1mm. Where the support post touched the ring it could do with a little bit finer points, but it was pretty damn good. I was pretty happy with that first effort on the coral ring, so I thought I would continue with the other designs. Here's where disaster struck again. I used the exact same file for the geometric ring with it up on its side and unfortunately it stopped halfway through. I couldn't find any errors in the slice layers in Nano DLP, but I thought I would spend the time in B9 Creator setting up a base just like I did with the other ring. Here you can see my workflow in detail, and I must say I'm still pretty new to this so if you've got some great suggestions please leave them in the comments. I start by rotating the ring to the correct orientation and then lifting it up off the bed. I then go to support and the first thing I tried was to use automatic support with a pretty low density. This is something I rarely try because quite often I think it ends up being a waste of time. In this example here it does the type of thing that I really hate. It puts the post on the inside of the part where it's going to be really hard to remove it without leaving a mark. I immediately decided that I should remove them all and place them again manually. Switching the tool to add, I came underneath and here you can see a really nice feature of B9 Creator. As I move around the mouse you can see that the current Z height is traced in white. This allows you to move it to the point where it's the smallest which means it's the lowest point of the ring. Unfortunately where I just placed the second one the post was poking through in a place that would be impossible to remove without damaging the ring. I therefore deleted it, put the support tool back to add and then very carefully placed the new post in a place closer to the outside of the ring where it wouldn't poke through. I then proceeded to place another 6 support posts, placing them as evenly as I could along that outer rim of the ring. My aim is to always place them in a place that's going to make them easy to cut off at the end. The other thing I'm always aiming for is to support the model equally around its centre of gravity. How did it turn out? Pretty good. Even at 50 microns you can still see some layer lines because of the very shallow surfaces. Apart from that, it was great, so I turned my attention to the next two rings. I decided this time to do two at once because I was going to orientate them in a very similar way. I started off by adding foundation, shrinking it down as small as I thought I could get away with, and then switched the camera underneath to evenly place the support posts. Once again I paid attention to the white guideline to get it right on the edge at the lowest point. 
I had to be careful just like with the last ring to make sure it wasn't too close to the inner ring otherwise it would poke through and it would be impossible to cut from the inside. Before you save your file to print, it always pays to check and double check to make sure you haven't missed any areas. Zoom out and have a look from afar to make sure everything is spaced evenly and you don't have any errors. For the last ring I did pretty much the same thing. I added a foundation and then went around the outside trying to evenly add the support posts. It's pretty tedious but with this resin being so expensive it's important to get it right. Time to print. Again I was super happy. You can see some ley lines on the shallow top surface but because it's flat it's going to be really easy to polish those out when the silver ring comes back. By this point I had printed the four designs featured in this series so far but I figured I might as well get a little bit more value for the time I was investing and come up with a few more designs to send off to be cast. I reached out to my patrons on Patreon and let them choose the next design. Patron Hamish suggested this USB keychain as found on Thingiverse. It printed flawlessly. Another great print, so at this stage I was feeling pretty cocky and I thought it was time to tackle something really small and detailed. Enter the Tiny Yoda. Now this tiny thing has blown my mind. Each little strand is less than half a millimetre in diameter. The detail in this thing is outstanding, even though it could be a little bit better in the ears and eyes. Just wow. The printing portion was finished, so it was time to snip off the support and the base material. Just like the Monocure 3D resin, this stuff is pretty brittle after you've printed it. Before it's cured is the best time to snip off all the support posts. There are going to be some artifacts left behind from where they were snipped off. Fortunately the way I positioned everything they should be on the outer surfaces of the ring and very easy to sand and then polish off when the rings come back. Anything still chunky I used a screwdriver to scrape off and then a fine toothbrush to get rid of the debris. The revolved ring was probably the worst for leaving behind marks where the supports were cut off but because they're on the outside they'll still be easy to remove later on. The detail on the inside of this ring is stunning. I can't wait to see it shining at me in silver. The USB was perfect too, but everyone has a favourite and for me it's this Yoda. This thing is going to look insane when it comes back in silver. Hopefully they're able to cast it and it survives the trip in one piece because it's pretty delicate. As the instructions advised I still needed to post cure before sending it off to be cast. Apparently I was looking for it to turn from white to blue when it was ready, but just so I didn't take any chances I started with some of the discarded bases. My cheap eBay UV nail cura has two power settings. I decided for something this delicate I'd start on the low power one. After several cycles of 90 seconds you can see that it's turning from blue to clear as promised. It makes sense that the thicker portions take longer and you might need to keep curing until you get them all clear instead of blue. Confident I wasn't going to destroy my hard earned work I decided to proceed with the actual models. Some of them took a long time to get evenly clear but I just pursued with lower power creeping up and creeping up until I was finally happy with the result. This photo I took on my phone and labelled and I emailed it to the caster ahead of time so they knew what was coming. I packed them in paper towel, inside foam, inside a box, surrounded by foam and then a waterproof bag over the top of that. To say I'm excited is somewhat of an understatement. Palos replied to my email and told me I should have them back within about two weeks. In the next instalment of this series we'll be unboxing the rings and seeing just how good they turned out. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.